Hi everyone, welcome back. In this video, as you can see, I am going to talk about genetic algorithms by providing a quick overview of what they are. And in the next five to six videos or so, we're going to see how we can actually get our hands dirty by doing some coding in Python. Not a lot, some coding in Python. First, to understand what these algorithms are, how can they be used for, uh, for example, uh, optimization problems. And uh, we'll also go through a fun exercise of finding the best combination of different metals to create the best alloy yeah which is basically a uh, optimization problem and my subscribers by the way if you haven't already subscribed please pause the video right now and hit the subscribe button and while you are there find the little thanks button in case you're feeling extra generous now what was i saying i was saying that my subscribers know that my primary focus has always been on image processing, image analysis, because I come from a microscopy background, but I have also talked about time series in the past and in the last few videos you saw me cover the topic of natural language processing, not just because it's just cool, but these type of tools that may not look like uh, they're related directly to what you're doing, but eventually they will be related to what you're doing. So you may as well learn a bit about uh, all these other topics. So genetic algorithms is one of those topics, especially for those of you in the field of, for example, engineering, you may uh, find uh, a tool, you may be uh, in the need of a tool that helps you in terms of optimizing certain parameters. And genetic algorithms is a good, uh, uh, is, is one of the tools that I think you should have in your toolkit. Okay, with that lengthy, uh, almost one and a half to two minute uh, introduction, let me go ahead and actually provide you a quick introduction of what these are and jump onto the next video in the next week and talk about how you can actually uh, code these. Okay, so first of all, what are these genetic algorithms? So genetic algorithms are a type of evolutionary algorithm. It's in the name. It says genetic. It's an evolutionary algorithm, which means you have different evolutions, and as these evolutions go by, something gets better, right? And it's in inspired by the process of natural selection in biological evolution, and my goal for this video is to make sure you understand exactly what I'm talking about right now. So they are used to solve optimization problems like I already mentioned. So finding the optimal uh, values for various parameters. Again, we'll, including hyperparameter tuning, although there are better approaches for hyperparameter uh, tuning, but this is again, one of the tools that you can think of when you're, when you're uh, uh, maybe I'll do a video on hyperparameter tuning uh, using genetic algorithms a few videos from now. And these involve creating a population of candidate solutions. First, how do you start off? You have a population. Let's say you have 100 uh, things in your population, 100 people, okay, in your population. And then you evolve, like you select the top 10 people. For that, you need to have a criteria. What, what do you mean by top 10? Are they the top 10 in terms of height, in terms of weight, in terms of their IQ? Like, what, what, what are these top 10? So you need to have a criteria. That's called an objective function that tells you exactly what the criteria is for the selection. Okay, we'll get to that, all of that. Uh, once you have that, once you select then the top individuals, then you perform some sort of a crossover between the top individuals. You pick the two parents and then you perform some sort of a cro crossover. And then, of course, as you probably know, random mutations actually happen that kind of give special traits to the children. This is the concept. And once the mutation, you know, these steps are done, now you go back to the next generation and you simulate this, right? So this is after the first generation, you get uh, certain traits, certain values, and then you go back and you continue. So this is the this is the essence of genetic algorithms. Now they involve, uh, I already mentioned, they involve the uh, selection crossover and mutation process. And the selection operator, what does they do? It involves selecting the fittest individuals. Again, you need criteria. Under what criteria are we calling them fittest? Is it body mass index, right? That can be a criteria. That is an objective function. So you need to define a function that quantifies what fit means in this case. And for example, if you are trying to come up with uh, the best alloy, where you mix like uh, carbon with manganese with nickel and silicon and uh, all of that you dilute in some sort of in, in iron. What is the ratio that gives you the best alloy? Now, when you say best, what does that mean? It can be best yield strength. So 
what is the combination that gives you the best strength of the alloy? In other case, maybe you need a combination that gives you the best, uh, you know, uh, uh, I don't know, uh, uh, let's say elongation of your material. I'm just thinking, so please excuse my uh, us, you know, uh, when I'm talking, but uh, you, I, I hope you understand what I'm uh, trying to get to here. So the fit means uh, it, it needs to be defined via objective function. And there's a reason why I'm stressing on that because defining objective function is often times a challenge for your specific problem, could be a challenge. Now the crossover involves combining the genetic material of two individuals to create a new individual. So you take like top two in the population or random two in your top population, and then you kind of combine them. And once you combine, you get a child, right? So that child, whatever that is, that child can go through a mutation operator because all the genes, I mean, you don't just get from, uh, you know, the father and the mother. Sometimes you have certain random mutations going on that gives additional traits to the child. And that's what the mutation operation operator is. And keep watching to understand exactly what, what, these, what this means. And uh, don't give up. This is definitely for you. Uh, if you are into Python coding and if you work with numbers, if you work with some uh, scientific uh, engineering challenges. Now, uh, where, where are these uh, applied? Uh, they are applied in various optimization. Anytime you think, hey, what is the best, whatever that thing is, probably genetic algorithm can help you. And they're used in feature selection. You can uh, use them for you know, uh, tuning your hyperparameters and so on. And uh, the example I gave you about yield strength, that's about uh, optimization for engineering design, right? So that's one thing that you can actually use it for financial forecasting, a whole bunch of stuff. Once you understand what it is, I'm pretty sure you're smart enough to figure out, hey, this is applied in my research at this point and so on. Um, I want to also highlight uh, limitations uh, of these. Uh, basically, you are, I mean, uh, advantages, they have the ability to search through a whole bunch of parameter space and they're flexible and they can be adapted to almost anything. As long as you can quantify some objective function, you're good to go. But they can be computationally expensive, but that's, I don't worry about that much. Uh, but you know, the, just to mention a limitation, that's one. And define, defining an objective function, or you can call it a fitness function, like is it fit or not fit? You know, that can be challenging depending on the problem itself, right? It's an easy, uh, easy thing for certain certain. Uh, you know, uh, for example, again, yield strength. What is the desired yield strength, and what is the maximum yield strength versus what is the minimum, right? Those are okay, but sometimes it can be a bit challenging in terms of thinking. Hey, how do I structure this? So that's it. I think you're enlightened. Uh, if not, if you're still confused, let me use some examples to talk about it. So first thing first, we say, hey, it starts by creating a population and the population can be of any numbers. Now, typically it's customary to actually convert them uh, or, or, uh, or use, represent, let's say your variables as some sort of a binary uh, string. I say a binary string because I'm not just saying, hey, your optimal values are, I don't know, 28 and 56. Hey, convert my 28 into a binary number and 56 into a binary number. This is not what I'm talking about, although you can do that. You just generate a string of zeros and ones. How long? You can say 16, you can say 32, it depends. So a, a string in this example, this is obviously a string of six digits. and the uh, you create a population in this case there is only population of two but ideally you have a population of let's say i don't know uh, 100 and you pick the top two or randomly pick two either way you have some criteria in this case i picked the top two let's say these two and then you assign a fitness uh, uh, to each individual hey i pick this and you quantify fitness this is where the fitness function comes into picture you plug the values that you just saw into your fitness function. One way to do that is, hey, I have this value, convert that into an integer number, yeah? And convert this into another integer. And whatever integer is uh, the maximum, that is the fitness, okay? That's, that's as simple as that, but it can be different. Again, the goal for the next few videos is to understand this a bit better and use it in real life scenarios. And selection is the selection, uh, it, the, the, 
you have a bunch of uh, uh, population, you have a lot of population and you have the fitness scores and you actually select the parents. You, let's say you select two parents from this by looking at the fitness score. And there are, again, various approaches for doing that. Tournament selection is one and it's ba basically nothing but you draw like how many of our candidates, like K number of candidates from the population randomly, and then you group them based on the fitness. So out of 100, you can say, I want 10 random ones and assess the fitness of those 10. And then you select the top two of those 10. Yeah, that's a, a quick example of tournament selection. And parents are then taken in pairs for the rest of the operation. So once you select these two, now comes the crossover and mutation. What is crossover? It's as simple as, <coughs> excuse me, for each pair of parents, now you select crossover points. It can be, you can say, okay, select random five spots. Or in this case, I say, hey, uh, put a red line here, anything left to it, just swap the values. This is the crossover. And on the right hand side, I'm not doing anything. Yeah, so you see zero became one uh, in child number one and uh, one became zero in child number two. So we're just swapping these. This is the crossover. Now, once you cross over, you have, uh, let's say, child one, and child one uh, gets mutated randomly. So if you take this child one, 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 zero, 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 one, 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 zero, zero, uh, zero, one, right? So now that child became, you can call it parent, or you can call it child one, but that number, you randomly uh, change one of those from zero to one, and that's a mutation. And you can set a mutation percentage by saying, hey, only mutation is not that common, right? So you can set only 0.1% of the time, go ahead and change this randomly. Otherwise, it's just a crossover. So these are the levers that you have in controlling this algorithm or defining this algorithm. So once the mutation is done, okay, now you're done with your generation, go ahead and go back to the fitness function and then repeat this process until some stopping criteria actually is achieved. So this is it. This is what genetic algorithms are. And I know this could be a bit vague for uh, for those of you who probably never heard this, uh, heard of this before. And if you have heard of this before, I'm super happy that you're watching my tutorial, even though you heard of this before. Uh, that tells me that you probably like to listen things uh, when I explain. Great, thank you, thumbs up. And in the next video, instead of directly jumping into this, I just wanna show you how this is evolutionary. We will use this kind of framework to do some sort of, a, let's say, a simulation of uh, an animal blending into the background. I'm not simulating an animal, but let's say, hey, we start with a bunch of random colors. And we say that, okay, this these bunch of random colors are living in African Serengeti, let's say where the background is all brownish. So is this random colored animal after certain generations going to be evolved into that? So if you really think that's kind of cool, go ahead again, hit the subscribe button. I'll see you in the next video.